serial killers constitute a small percentage of criminals, yet their crimes provoke immense public outcry. According to FBI data, in the United States between 1980 and 2010, the number of active serial killers decreased by approximately 85% from 200 to 30 cases annually. In Europe, this phenomenon is rarer. Between 1922 and 2021, only several dozen cases of serial killings were recorded. Analyses indicate that most serial killers are men aged 25-45, often with above-average intelligence. Their motives are varied, but sexual urges and the desire for dominance over their victims are predominant. Leonardo Cianciulli was an Italian female serial killer whose horrifying crimes earned her the nickname Soap Maker of Correggio. Born on November 14, 1894, in Montella di Avellino, her childhood was filled with suffering and rejection from her mother. Traumatic experiences in her youth, including two suicide attempts, shaped her unstable personality. In 1917, against her family's wishes, she married official Raffaele Pansardi and moved to the city of Correggio. The marriage became another source of suffering, of the 17 children she bore, only four survived early childhood. These tragic events deepened her belief in curses and superstitions, developing an obsessive attachment to her surviving son, Giuseppe. A turning point in her life came in 1939 when her beloved son was drafted into the army. Convinced that only by making a human sacrifice could she save him from death, she began a series of macabre murders. Between 1939 and 1940, she killed three women, Faustina Setti, Francesca Soavi, and Virginia Cacioppo. Each victim was lured to her home under the pretense of needing personal assistance. Particularly terrifying was how she treated the bodies of her victims. After murder, she processed them into soap and cookies. With macabre precision, she later described how she used human fat to produce soap, which she generously gave to neighbors, and baked cookies from other body parts, serving them even to her own family and guests. She especially favored the body of her last victim, Virginia Cacioppo, claiming it produced the best soap due to its excellent consistency. Her criminal activities were discovered only after Virginia Cacioppo went missing, when the victim's family raised suspicions. During the trial in 1946, Cianciulli calmly and accurately described her crimes, showing no remorse. She was sentenced to 30 years in prison and three years in a psychiatric facility. She died on October 15, 1970 in a prison psychiatric hospital in Pozzuoli. Catherine Knight is an Australian murderer who, in 2000, committed one of the most shocking murders in the country's criminal history. Born in 1955 into a dysfunctional family, she experienced violence and abuse from a young age. Her mother regularly detailed her sexual experiences and the violence her husband inflicted on her, significantly impacting young Catherine's psyche. In school, Knight was known for her aggressive behavior, often attacking other students and teachers. After finishing school at 15, she worked in a slaughterhouse, quickly being promoted to a meat cutter. This job provided her immense satisfaction, and co-workers noticed her particular fondness for using knives. Her first marriage to David Kellett was marked by brutality. On their wedding night, she attempted to suffocate him. Throughout their relationship, she repeatedly attacked him with knives and other objects. After an attack with a frying pan, Kellett had to walk himself to the hospital with a severe head injury. Following the divorce, her subsequent relationships were also characterized by violence, both physical and psychological. In 1999, Knight met John Price, who became her last victim. Despite Price knowing about her violent temper, he chose to enter into a relationship. In February 2000, after a series of threats from Knight, Price obtained a court order banning her from approaching him. On February 29, 2000, 
Knight sneaked into his house and committed murder. The details of the crime are exceptionally macabre. Knight inflicted at least 37 stab wounds on Price, then, using her butchering skills, decapitated and skinned the body. She then cooked parts of the victim's body along with vegetables, preparing a meal she intended to serve to his children. She left notes beside the plates with the children's names. Police found her unconscious in the house from a drug overdose. A terrifying scene was discovered in her home, parts of Price's body scattered in various places. The victim's skin hung on a hook in the living room, and his head was boiling in a pot with vegetables. In 2001, a court trial took place. Initially, Knight claimed she did not remember the events of the murder night. She underwent detailed psychiatric examinations, which revealed she suffered from borderline personality disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. Nevertheless, the court ruled that she acted with full awareness. Luca Magnata is a Canadian murderer and former online model who shocked the world in 2012 by committing particularly macabre crimes. Born as Eric Clinton Kirk Newman in 1982 in Scarborough, Ontario, he exhibited personality disorders and narcissistic tendencies from a young age. Before his main crime, he became notorious for posting videos online depicting the killing of cats. In one video, he placed small animals in a vacuum-sealed bag, and in another, he fed a live kitten to a snake. These videos outraged internet users who launched an online investigation to uncover his identity. The culmination of his criminal activities was the murder of Chinese student Lin Jun in Montreal in May 2012. Magnata recorded the entire murder with a camera and then posted the video online titled One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. The footage showed the murderer delivering fatal blows to the victim with a screwdriver, followed by acts of cannibalism and necrophilia. After the murder, he dismembered the victim's body and sent parts to various institutions, including the Conservative Party of Canada headquarters. His narcissism and need for fame led him to deliberately leave clues about his location, sparking an international manhunt. Magnata fled to Europe, where he was eventually arrested in an internet cafe in Berlin while browsing articles about himself. During the trial, his defense argued that he suffered from schizophrenia and was not responsible for his actions. However, psychiatric evaluations showed he was aware of his actions. In December 2014, he was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole after 25 years. He was also banned from using the internet. Tsutomu Miyazaki was a Japanese serial killer known as the Otaku Killer or the little girl killer, who murdered four young girls aged between four and seven years old in Saitama Prefecture between 1988 and 1989. Born in 1962 with severe hand deformities, his wrists were permanently bent, he struggled with social isolation and mental health issues from childhood. He was raised in a wealthy family running a printing business, but his childhood was marked by rejection and loneliness. In school, he was bullied for his physical deformity. He developed an obsession with manga, anime, and pornographic films, amassing a vast collection of such materials. His room was filled with thousands of videotapes and magazines. His first murder occurred in August 1988 when he kidnapped four-year-old Mari Kano. He then killed seven-year-old Masami Yoshizawa in October of the same year, four-year-old Erika Nanba in December, and five-year-old Ayako Nomoto in June 1989. His crimes were particularly brutal. He not only murdered his victims, but also engaged in necrophilia and cannibalism. After the murders, he sent macabre letters to the victims' families, containing detailed descriptions of the crimes and parts of the murdered girls' bodies. In one case, he sent the victims ashes and teeth along with a letter comparing himself to an anime character. Some body parts were kept as souvenirs, others were burned, 
and the ashes were mixed with food, which he then consumed. He was arrested on July 23, 1989, while attempting to attack another girl. He was caught after the potential victim's father found him taking photos of his daughter. In his apartment, police discovered over 5,800 videotapes, including recordings of his crimes and materials containing violence and pornography. During the trial, his lawyers argued that he suffered from schizophrenia and dissociative disorders. Miyazaki behaved eccentrically in court, sometimes communicating through a hand puppet. He claimed that his crimes were inspired by a demon residing in his mutated left hand. Nevertheless, he was deemed sane. In April 1997, he was sentenced to death, and the sentence was carried out by hanging on June 17, 2008, in Japan. Ed Gein is one of the most macabre murderers in U.S. history, known as the Plainfield Butcher. Born in 1906 in Wisconsin, he was raised by a religiously fanatical, domineering mother, Augusta, and an alcoholic father. His mother instilled extremely warped moral and religious values in him, teaching that all women except herself were sources of sin. This toxic relationship shaped his psyche, leading to deep-seated disorders and an obsession with death and the female body. Between 1947 and 1957, he committed two documented murders, Mary Hogan and Bernice Worden. However, it was not the number of victims but his modus operandi that made him infamous in criminal history. Gain regularly desecrated graves at a local cemetery, exhuming the bodies of women resembling his deceased mother. From the remains, he created a macabre collection of everyday items. During a search of his farm in 1957, police discovered horrifying finds, furniture covered in human skin, containers made from skulls, masks with human faces, belts made from nipples, necklaces from lips, and clothing sewn from human skin. The most shocking discovery was the woman's costume, a vest made from human skin with attached breasts, which Gein wore during his rituals, attempting to become his mother. After his arrest, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and obsessive compulsive disorder. He was declared insane and spent the rest of his life in psychiatric institutions, where he died in 1984 of cancer. His story inspired many iconic horror films, including Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and The Silence of the Lambs. Joe Metheny was an American serial killer and cannibal known as the Hamburger Man from Baltimore. Born in 1955, he murdered at least 10 people between 1994 and 1996, though he confessed to more. His story took a particularly macabre turn when it was revealed that he sold the meat of his victims to unsuspecting customers as hamburgers from his roadside stand. Metheny's first murders were acts of revenge. He killed two homeless men he suspected of hiding his wife and son. This personal tragedy, when his drug-addicted wife fled with their son, was a turning point in his life. After these murders, his urge to kill only grew stronger. He began targeting primarily prostitutes and drug addicts, believing that no one would search for them. He lured his victims to an abandoned warehouse in Baltimore, where he worked as a forklift operator. There, he tortured, raped, and killed them. He dismembered some victims and buried them on the warehouse grounds, while others were processed into meat. Using his knowledge of meat processing, having previously worked in a slaughterhouse, he prepared macabre meals. A pivotal moment in his career was opening a roadside hamburger stand. Metheny mixed human meat with pork and beef, creating burgers he sold to random drivers and local residents. In later testimonies, he admitted deriving sadistic pleasure from watching people eat his special hamburgers, praising their unique taste. His capture came after a failed attempt to rape and murder in 1996. 
the potential victim managed to escape and reported the incident to the police. During interrogations, Matheny exhibited shocking honesty and complete lack of remorse. He detailed his crimes, claiming that killing gave him incredible pleasure. He also confessed to other murders that were never confirmed. During the trial, psychiatrists described him as a sadistic psychopath. Despite his defense's attempts to cite a troubled childhood growing up in an alcoholic family and trauma from losing his son, he was sentenced to death. The sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. In the Western Correctional Institution in Maryland, he repeatedly gave interviews in which he unabashedly discussed his crimes. He stated that he felt no remorse for his actions and would do the same again if given the chance. Metheny died in prison in 2017. David Parker Ray was an American serial killer and sadistic torturer known as the Toy Box Killer. Between the 1950s and 1999, he tortured and murdered an estimated 14 to 60 women in New Mexico, though the exact number of victims remains unknown. His nickname derives from a specially designed trailer he called the Toy Box, equipped with torture tools worth $100,000. Ray grew up in a dysfunctional family, experiencing violence from his alcoholic father. From a young age, he exhibited sadistic tendencies and a fascination with BDSM. Working as a mechanic, he used his technical skills to create a terrifying mobile torture center. His toy box was outfitted with a gynecological chair with straps, various surgical tools, vibrators, electric generators, electroshock devices, video cameras, and specially constructed torture instruments. Mirrors hung on the walls so victims could watch their suffering. He also played a recorded audio tape informing victims of what awaited them. In his crimes, he collaborated with several individuals, including his girlfriend Cindy Hendy and daughter Glenda Jessie Ray. Victims were either kidnapped or lured under false pretenses, then drugged and transported to the toy box, where they were held for days or weeks. Ray subjected them to brutal beatings, torture, rape, and medical experiments. Many of his victims were never found, it's suspected that their bodies were dumped into Elephant Butte Lake. His criminal activities were uncovered in 1999 when one of his victims, Cynthia Vigil, managed to escape after three days of torture. Ray was arrested and sentenced to 224 years in prison for kidnappings and torture. He died in prison in 2002 of a heart attack, never admitting to any murders. During the investigation, detailed journals and recordings documenting his crimes as well as letters to potential victims were discovered. Ray meticulously described his fantasies and actions, leaving a terrifying testament to his sadism. Robert Picton is a Canadian serial killer known as the Pig Farmer, who murdered at least 49 women on his pig farm in Port Coquitlam, British Columbia, between 1983 and 2002. He is considered the most brutal serial killer in Canadian history. His victims were primarily sex workers and drug addicts from Vancouver's poorest neighborhood, downtown Eastside. Picton operated the pig farm with his brother. The site, known as Piggy's Palace, also served as an illegal banquet hall, hosting loud parties for bikers and other shady groups. It was there that he lured his victims by offering them drugs and alcohol. His method was exceptionally macabre. He brutally killed women using farm tools. After murder, he dismembered the victims and fed the remains to his pigs. Some body parts were processed, mixed with pork meat, and sold to local residents or served at parties. He was captured in 2002 after police found personal belongings of missing women and their DNA on his farm. During the search, horrifying evidence was uncovered. Human remains, victims' identification documents, and various personal items belonging to the murdered women. Investigators spent 18 months combing every inch of the six-hectare farm. 
During the investigation, Picton confessed to a police informant to murdering 49 women and expressed regret that he couldn't kill the full 50. He detailed how he killed his victims and disposed of their bodies. The trial revealed that local police had ignored reports of missing women from downtown Eastside for years. In 2007, he was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole for 25 years. Although he admitted to 49 murders, he was only convicted of murdering six women due to the prosecution's legal strategy. His case led to a thorough reform of Canadian police practices regarding missing persons investigations. Anatoly Onoprienko was a Ukrainian serial killer known as the Beast of Ukraine, or Terminator, who murdered 52 people, including 10 children between 1989 and 1996. His crimes were marked by extreme cruelty and a meticulously developed modus operandi, making him one of the most brutal serial killers in Eastern European history. Growing up in an orphanage after his father abandoned him at age four, he developed deep personality disorders. He later claimed to have acted under the command of internal voices that ordered him to kill entire families. His method was terrifyingly consistent. He broke into isolated homes at night, murdered all residents using firearms or household tools, and then set the buildings on fire. He began his career with home invasions alongside his accomplice, Sergei Rogozin, whom he later also killed. Onoprienko spared no one. He killed men, women, children, and even random witnesses. Particularly disturbing was that he often spent extended periods in his victims' homes after killing them, eating, drinking, sometimes even sleeping there, and then taking small items as trophies. He was arrested in 1996 after his brother recognized items belonging to the murdered individuals on him. At the time of his capture, his apartment contained 122 items from crime scenes. During interrogations, he detailed his crimes with photographic memory and complete lack of remorse. In court, he defended himself by claiming he acted under orders from extraterrestrial beings that instructed him to cleanse the world. However, psychiatrists deemed him sane. In 1999, he was sentenced to death, but the sentence was commuted to life imprisonment after the death penalty was abolished in Ukraine. He died in prison in 2013 of a heart attack. Andrei Chikatilo was a Soviet serial killer known as the Butcher of Rostov, or the Red Ripper, who murdered 53 people, mainly women and children, between 1978 and 1990. He's considered one of the most savage murderers in the history of the Soviet Union, and his crimes shocked the entire Eastern Bloc. Born in 1936 in Ukraine, he grew up during the Great Famine, which psychologists believe contributed to his developing disorders. From a young age, he suffered from impotence and personality disorders. Despite this, he married and worked as a teacher, though he was dismissed for molesting students. He later found employment as a supply clerk, which allowed him to travel and hunt for victims. His modus operandi was exceptionally brutal. He lured victims to isolated locations where he committed sexually motivated murders. He derived sexual satisfaction solely from inflicting pain and watching his victims suffer. He used knives to stab and mutilate his victims, often severing body parts and genital organs. In some cases, he engaged in cannibalism. The investigation into his crimes lasted 12 years. Soviet authorities long denied the existence of a serial killer in the USSR, claiming such crimes were characteristic only of the corrupt West. During this time, an innocent man was captured and executed for the crimes. Chikatilo was finally arrested in 1990 when he was seen leaving a forest where a victim's body was later found. During a six-day interrogation, he detailed all his crimes. Psychiatrists diagnosed him with a sadistic personality and schizophrenia, but he was deemed sane. During the trial, he was held in a metal cage for safety. 
he behaved eccentrically, sometimes shouting, stripping, and acting inappropriately for the situation. In 1992, he was sentenced to death for 52 murders and one attempted murder. Before his execution, he wrote a 70-page petition to President Yeltsin, claiming his crimes were the result of medical experiments conducted on him during childhood. He was executed by shooting on February 14, 1994. Albert Fish was a sadistic serial killer operating in the United States during the 1920s, whose crimes combined violence, cannibalism, and religious fanaticism. Born in 1870 in Washington, he grew up in an orphanage where his first traumatic experiences shaped his twisted personality. His real name was Hamilton Howard Fish, but he was also known as the Gray Man and the Brooklyn Vampire. Fish's life was filled with an obsession with violence, pain, and deviant sexual behaviors. Despite outward appearances of normalcy, working as a house painter and having six children, he systematically hunted young victims, primarily from impoverished families. He used his unassuming appearance as an elderly man to gain the trust of potential victims and their families. His most notorious crime was the murder of 10-year-old Grace Budd in 1928, whom he lured under the guise of a birthday party, then murdered and partially consumed her. Similar fates befell 8-year-old Francis McDonald, 4-year-old Billy Gaffney, and 5-year-old Emma Richardson. Fish confessed to molesting over 400 children, though this number was never verified. Psychiatrists diagnosed him with a complex set of disorders, combining sexual sadism, pedophilia, cannibalism, and religious delusions. He practiced extreme forms of self-harm, inserting needles into his body and performing other acts of self-aggression. During his autopsy, 29 rusty needles were found in his body. Captured in 1934, he was tried and sentenced to death. He was executed in Sing Sing Prison in 1936, where multiple attempts were needed to electrocute him due to the presence of metal needles in his body. Fish remained unmoved by his actions, treating his own execution as another thrilling experience in a life filled with violence. Alexander Pachushkin is a Russian serial killer known as the Chessboard Killer, who terrorized Moscow, particularly the Bitsevsky Park, between 1992 and 2006. Born in 1974, this young Russian developed an obsession with chess after suffering a brain injury in childhood from falling off a swing. This passion later transformed into a macabre game where each murder corresponded to a square on the chessboard. His methods of killing were brutal and repetitive. He typically invited his victims, mainly homeless men and elderly individuals, to drink vodka in the park to commemorate the death of his dog. He would then attack them from behind, hitting them in the back of the head with a hammer. A distinctive element of his crimes was embedding bottles into the victim's head wounds, often so deeply that the bottles reached their brains. Pachushkin kept meticulous records of his murders. On a chessboard, he marked each victim, aiming to fill all 64 squares. He was arrested in June 2006 after murdering Marina Moskalyova, who left a note to her son informing him of her meeting with Pachushkin. During the trial, he confessed to 61 murders and three attempted murders, though officially 48 victims were confirmed. During interrogations, he demonstrated extraordinary precision in describing his crimes and showed no remorse. He claimed that killing gave him the feeling of being a father god and that each murder provided him more pleasure than the last. He detailed the process of his victims' deaths stating that he enjoyed observing the changes in their eyes at the moment of death. The court deemed him sane, and in 2007, he was sentenced to life imprisonment with the first 15 years in solitary confinement. Pachushkin is serving his sentence at the Polar Owl Prison in Siberia, one of Russia's strictest penitentiaries.
In prison interviews, he repeatedly expressed regret for not being able to complete all 64 squares of his chessboard and declared that if released, he would immediately resume killing. 